you a fan of this podcast? Do you wish there was even more juicy content for you to sink your ears into? Well, there is. You can become a premium member of this podcast for $5.99 a month and get full access to an archive of over 50 bonus episodes. Additionally, we release a bonus episode every single month. That's a ton of extra content, including my personal interior design diaries, extra tips, my talking about trends, and so much more. Additionally, you'll be keeping us on the airwaves each and every week because your premium membership money goes directly back to making this podcast amazing. Check us out at affordableinteriordesign.com, click on podcast to learn more and to become a premium member today. need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. Hi, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having an amazing summer. I know for many of you, summer is officially wrapping up because the kids are back at school. And I always think that's so tragic because there's so much more of summer left. So many more pool days, so many days where we could be on vacation. I really love living in the New York area. And one of the reasons, one of the many reasons, is because our school starts after Labor Day. And it's almost like clockwork. The week after Labor Day here in New York, it gets so, so chilly. And you don't want to be on vacation. You might as well be inside. It's almost the perfect timing. Of course, we don't get out of school until the end of June. So, you know, there's gives and takes, pros and cons. But I'm so excited to have a little bit more time with my family to head out on vacation. It's such a strange feeling because the excitement is, of course, dampened by all that's going on, all the precautions we'll have to take, We can't sit inside to eat. We're going to have to be really strategic and mindful and masked and ugh, but at least we'll be on the beach, right? Right. All right. Well, I'm starting to do something a little bit different this week. I'm going to start to lead off the podcast with a topic. You know, I work with clients every week, transforming their spaces, learning about their lives and what they want to do in their homes or their commercial spaces. And I think bringing some of those topics to you could be of interest. And then, of course, we'll dive into that mailbag. All right, without further ado, let me dig into the topic at hand. We're going to be talking about how to update a condo or apartment or co-op, but how to update a condo and make it just a little bit more modern. Because even if you're living in a structure that was built not in current day, right, I see a lot of big concrete buildings that were built in the 50s and 60s in New York City buildings that have very little character, buildings that look very dated, even though they're at the same time bland and boring. And then, of course, we also work in co-ops and condos that are pre-war. So maybe they have a lot of fantastic turn-of-the-century details. Maybe they have vaulted ceilings. But a lot of times, those details can lend themselves to feeling quite traditional. Some of my clients feel that it doesn't kind of evoke that light, airy feeling that they were hoping for that they had in maybe their previous apartment and they move all this stuff and it just feels like it doesn't go. The space isn't almost as modern as they'd like it to be. Now, listeners of mine are hearing me use this M word, modern, and we know as interior designers and as people who've listened to this podcast, we know that modern refers to an era. It refers to a style that's from the 50s and 60s that references, you know, really clean lines, lacquer, bold touches that are very minimal. But when my clients use the word modern, when people are Googling the word modern, they mean what's going on today. 
And in style lingo and interior design lingo, that is contemporary, but nobody really uses contemporary that's not in the biz, right? So I think there needs to be a new word for modern that refers to that style way back when. And I think we need to be able to use modern in this contemporary application because that's what everybody's typing in. That's what everybody's asking me about. Everyone uses the term modern, and I am not going to correct one of my clients because they don't care as deeply about semantics in the interior design world as I do. But today, just go with me as I use this word modern to mean contemporary or of today. So one way to modernize your condo is to remove any excessive window treatments that don't actually function. And what I'm referring to is a header. So a header is at the top of the window. It could be something that's quite contained, something that maybe has um, a wood structure that's painted, something that maybe has wood and then has fabric over the top of it, um, something that's painted to look like trim, but it's much chunkier. Or it can mean like a fabric valance. We all remember from the aughts, those fabric draped balances that were poofy or pleated or patterned, but quite eye-catching. The problem with all of those things that I just mentioned is that they are bulky. They serve no function. They are not clean lined. They are not contemporary. They certainly are not minimal. And they cut off a lot of natural light at the top of the window. In some places that are just flooded with light, well, that's not too much of a problem. But in other places that don't get a ton of natural light or that don't have very long windows, losing 8 to 10 inches at the top is pretty detrimental. And just get rid of those things. And my clients say, well, Betsy, what am I going to put there instead? You're going to put a long rod with two panels. You're going to keep it really clean and really minimal because that's the modern aesthetic. You don't even have to do drapery. You could just do a blind and leave it at that. That would be super sleek, especially if you did something like a roller blind, something that has a very structured header at the top so that you have the whole window open and free and unencumbered by bulky treatments. Another way to modernize your condo is to replace small pieces of art, whether they be small groupings or tiny touches throughout, with larger statement pieces. Again, we're trying to minimize. We're trying to make bolder, fresher, clean line statements rather than cluttering the space with lots of small things. We want to do the same thing when you're accessorizing. So look at your bookshelves, look at your floating shelves, look at the surface of your coffee table, look at the surface of your end table. If you have a lot of tchotchkes, knickknacks, picture frames, display coffee table books, that stuff needs to really be pared down. Instead of having lots of little things, we can think about making statements that still fill the space, but maybe are one larger idea. So instead of having a bookshelf on one shelf that has picture frames, a candle, a few books, and a souvenir from your travels, we could just do an elongated planter. And in the elongated planter, you could have small succulents. Or you could do a chunky basket with a lid. And it's just one piece, but it fills the shelf really well and then provides you a lot of function, but is a very clean, uncluttered statement. Another thing that you can do to contemporize your space is to look for furniture that has legs. Furniture that goes all the way down to the ground, be it a sofa with a skirt or a swivel chair that has one of those disc-like bases, it just feels heavy. It doesn't feel minimal, light, and fresh like contemporary or for today's purposes, modern design should. So looking for things with legs will help it to feel less heavy and less old-fashioned. And now it's time for a quick commercial break. Do you love this podcast? Do you wish you could learn even more? Well, we have an online class bundle. 
Our online class bundle is comprised of three online classes, Beautifying Your Home for Less, Styling Your Home, and The Fundamentals of Feng Shui. Each one of those three classes is between 30 and 45 minutes long and chock filled with visuals and tips, things that will help you to style your own space or help out with other spaces. Additionally, with the pack of three classes, you get an autographed copy of my book, Affordable Interior Design. You get all of that for only $99. Once again, that's the three online classes as well as the book for only $99. You just go to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to buy your bundle today. And if one of those classes sounded intriguing, but maybe you already have my book or some of the other topics are not of interest, you can buy the classes individually at that site as well. Each class is $40. So head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash classes to get your bundle or your online class today. All right, guys, now you know how to modernize your condo, co-op, or apartment. Let's move to the mailbag because we have some great questions that have come in this week. My first question, well, actually both questions in the mailbag right now come from Morgan. Morgan says, hi, Betsy. I love your podcast. My question today has to do with plumbing fixtures. I actually sell fixtures for my job, but I'm still kind of new to it. And I'm curious how you would describe achieving different styles with your fixtures. One example would be, I had a client come in asking about mid-century modern fixtures and how to make that cohesive with the rest of their home. Typically, my clients say they want modern. There you go, Morgan. Clients use the word modern. Maybe we need to think about that. Uh, typically, my clients say they want modern or sometimes even traditional. But when we get into other styles, then I'm not really sure what recommendation to make. Can you help me out with this? What shapes would you look for? Are there certain colors or finishes that fit into one style better than another? I do tend to see black with modern or oil rub bronze tends to be in more traditional homes. Do you have recommendations what to look out for? Feel free to talk about lighting as well. I think these things go hand in hand as these items are frequently purchased together to match finishes. Thank you so much. I look forward to hearing from you. P.S. If you already have an episode about this subject, just let me know so you don't have to double record. You do have almost 300 episodes, though, and I love listening to you. It's hard to sit down and to listen to all your episodes, but I have been listening. Well, thanks for listening from Cincinnati, Ohio, Morgan. I'm happy to help with this. First of all, congratulations on your new job working in design, whether it's recommending plumbing fixtures or whether it's picking out wallpaper like I do, is a really fun occupation. And I hope you realize that now more than ever, it makes a really big impact in people's lives. We're all at home all the time. We need to be looking at pretty things that align with our style. All right. In my humble opinion, there is not one finish that aligns with one certain style. I think that metal finishes can fit into any number of styles. I think black metal finishes can work really well in modern or contemporary design, as you mentioned. They also work beautifully in rustic farmhouse. They can be just the right thing in an industrial style space. And of course, they can be traditional depending on if there's some detailing to them, things like that. So it's not about the finish of the piece that gives it its style. It's about the lines, the shapes, the look. Because I have done traditional spaces that use polished silvers and chromes. I have done traditional spaces that use black metal finishes. So it really doesn't fall in one bucket or the other. I do have strong opinions on finishes, metal finishes when picking out hardware. The first is that you should keep it consistent throughout the home if possible. I know a lot of us are moving into homes and we just want to renovate the kitchen and we don't want to change out every doorknob and hinge from the attic to the basement just because we want a new faucet. It's not practical for all of us. I know that my kitchen features silvers. And the architecture of my home actually has a lot of oil rub bronze. It has those old doorknobs with the crystal and then the oil rub bronze backplates. But 
I don't have the time nor the energy to change all of that out right now. And so it's less than ideal. But if I was starting from scratch, if I was working with a client, we could just start making some dreams come true. Well, I would keep the metal finishes throughout the architecture of the home consistent. So you'd want to be asking the client, let me see the hinges of the home. Let me see the doorknobs. Let me see the other things like the light fixtures you mentioned, things that they're not going to change, right? So that's the first question. Then I might want to see the architecture of the home. Picking out a faucet could be for a kitchen, could be for a bathroom or powder room, and that needs to match with the architecture. And also... You want to ask your clients about resale value because just because you have a client who loves mid-century modern, let's just say that that mid-century modern loving client moved into a Victorian. Well, even though a lot of her furniture might be hearkening back to that mid-century modern era versus going way back, right? If you put a mid-century modern faucet in a Victorian Unless you do a lot of work to undo what's already going on architecturally in that space, it's going to look like an anomaly. It is going to look like the odd man out, right? And it is not going to be cohesive with the space. So I always want to know what type of architecture are we dealing with? If it's something more neutral, like those 50s and 60s apartments in New York City that are just concrete blocks, right? There's really nothing to them. You could project your own style quite easily when picking out a faucet. But in a place that already has a lot of personality, you better start to compromise or else you're going to have to completely gut the whole place. So I hate to tell you that the answer is much more nuanced, but Morgan, The answer is much more nuanced, and there is no finish that aligns with one style. I want to tell you one other thing about finishes. When I'm selecting finishes, of course I'm thinking architecturally, but as we remember from like the 80s, there's like that bad brass, right? And I'm worried that when we fully commit to one metal finish throughout a space, it can be really easy to look dated very quickly. I really love combining metal fixtures. So when I'm mixing metals, I want to make sure that I'm mixing in the right way. I never mix warm and cool metals. Warms are brasses, golds, coppers. Cools are chromes, pewters, silvers. I don't mix those two. But there's another type of metal finish called dark metals. And that's what you were referring to with your black, your oil rub bronze, your wrought iron. Those are the dark metal finishes. I will mix dark metal finishes with the cool metals. And I will mix dark metal finishes with the warm metals. That can make the space look much more designerly, much more complex, and can give it longevity and help it to not look dated as quickly. Morgan, so many finishing tips that even if your client comes in and gives you a question that might stump you, you'll have lots of feedback and lots of other things to share with them. And then you can write me that question. I'll answer it and you'll know for next time. So keep me posted, Morgan, and congratulations on your new job. I actually think after previewing the mailbag that you had another question. So let me dig in and see what this one was about, Morgan from Cincinnati. You write, my secondary question would be, how do you feel about mixing metals? Uh Uh-oh, I just gave you a little preview there. I have some clients who are very interested in having multiple colors in a bathroom or kitchen. What do you think about having one finish in your shower and the sink having another finish? Or maybe not matching exactly to your appliances in your kitchen? I would love to hear what you have to say. All right. Well, I gave you a little preview in my last question, but now we're going to take an even deeper dive. So when I decide that as a designer, I'm going to mix metals, I make sure that I have at least one piece in the room. So each room where I'm mixing those metal finishes, I have at least one piece in the room that is two-tone, that combines both metal finishes that I'm choosing to use in one conspicuous piece. Conspicuous meaning that it's clearly visible the minute I walk into the room so that I understand the visual rules of the space. So say we were designing a kitchen, right? If I wanted to combine silver metals, which a lot of us do, with 
let's just say dark metals, right? Because you know I'm never going to mix them with warm. So if we're combining that silver metal finish with the dark metal finish, maybe I would choose dark metal handles for the cabinetry. Maybe I would choose stainless steel appliances and maybe a silver finish faucet. But in order to play both things at one time, I would pick those overhead kitchen pendant lights that are above the island. I would make all four of them two-tone, prominently featuring silver and prominently featuring that dark metal finish. Another thing that I feel very strongly about is as you're incorporating metals throughout the space, you do not have to match the metals. In other words, if I'm using chrome, For the faucet, I wouldn't necessarily have to do chrome for the cabinet handles, right? So I could do like a brushed finish on the handles and I could have a chrome or shiny or polished finish on the faucet and that could definitely work together. So this has given you a lot more. We just went down the rabbit hole even a little bit more. But those are some guidelines that will help you to color mix in terms of your metals like a pro with confidence, easily sharing highly valuable tips with your future clients. I know that your boss at the Plumbing Fixture Company is going to see and recognize all these amazing tips, this wealth of knowledge that you're bringing to the clients. And I have a feeling you're going to be climbing that ladder at that company very, very soon. I love hearing your passion, Morgan. And as I mentioned before, guys, don't hesitate to send me your questions. I would love to hear more about the quandaries that are going on as you're designing either for your work or for pleasure at your own home. You can send me your questions to affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash podcast. I love answering them each and every week. And now guys, I'm going to sign off so I can go pack my bags and head to Rhode Island. Until next time. Bye. asked for it and we have answered the call. For years you've been saying, Betsy, you're talking about all these great design concepts, but we can't visualize them. You're describing the picture that the listener sent in of their problem and we wish we could see that picture too. After all, a picture is worth a thousand words and I do my best to describe them, but there's nothing like seeing it for yourself. And that's why Affordable Interior Design, the podcast, now has a YouTube channel. Not only do we have a YouTube channel where you could see recordings and clips of these podcast episodes, we also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and so many other exciting things. You should check it out. Head over to affordableinteriordesign.com slash links. Once again, affordableinteriordesign.com slash L-I-N-K-S links. And when you go there, you will see links to our YouTube page, our Instagram page, our Facebook page, and more. Please check it out, follow and subscribe so you can see everything I'm talking about. A big thank you to our amazing producer, Catherine Heller, to Aton and the MCR House Band, and to Affordable Interior Design, the sponsor of this podcast and the premier place to get an amazing look on a budget. Check out affordableinteriordesign.com. If you guys love the show, the very best way to support us is by spreading the word. Tell your friends or write us an awesome review on iTunes. So until next week, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.